it's something that we were, we were trying to get to, especially with Drake in later episodes, where especially the last couple, where it's you, Drake has to have some kind of uh, cathartic moment, and and in the end, hopefully one or one or both of them will be genuine with each other, because right now they they it, it's sort of obfuscated with with conflict with other people and with jokes and with costumes and uh, and that's just it's. I, if you if you're not driving at two people trying to come to an understanding of each other, I, I don't personally see the point of doing it. So yeah, uh, I don't know what else to talk about. I I think that it's we could talk about um, some of the color correction that that we did here. We have three or four primary color schemes. We've got the pink. We, I think you can see in most of the scenes here, especially in the Prius. Uh, you've got orange, where uh, sodium vapors are emphasized. Uh, you've got different colors on both Sean, who's driving, and the people who are in the back. And then, of course, uh, Ned, who's in the Mini Cooper. All, those are four different color schemes. And uh, I think that what I was trying to do, what we what we what we wanted to emphasize with the was the colorful nature of living in Los Angeles, and and also the fact that it's a fantasy and that things are very subjective. Yeah, I, there, it's the coloring is definitely a decision. I think that in L.A. at night when driving, things tend to be orange outside of the car, and if you have lights inside of your car, they tend to be orange. The overhead lights and most of the dashboards are going to be either orange or red, but I think it's important and a good instinct on your part to differentiate the outside world from the inside world. So when they're inside the car, it's always a little more pink, you know, uh, and when they're outside, you get this very kind of murky, kind of kind of I don't want to say dangerous kind of orange color when yeah. they're outside. You know, never get out of the car, man. Never get out. Never, never get out of the boat. But, but there's a um, there's also the idea of you, there are many ways to create a world, and everything that you do when you're making a st- or telling a story through the visual medium it has the potential to elevate the the world that you're in. So whether it's hiding a character to reveal later or to increase mystique or to change the overall lighting scheme to sort of a, a magenta or pink or orange or green or to have four different color schemes going or to add funny sounds through it to emphasize the silliness of the moment. Everything should be accounted for if you can. Of course, budget and time take its toll. I think... And the reason I, I guess that's very old school of me, but I, I tend to find that a lot of stuff that I've been watching lately seems to try to replicate reality. And I, I just don't think that's the point of making movies because for me, movies are like fever dreams and um, waking dreams. And I, I, I want to try to replicate that in uh, in my pieces. Well, I think it it depends on the story that's being told. This is a much this is a very high no point. no sorry you're wrong. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. 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 Mark's broken now. Mark, Mark's hurt. What's going on right here? He's. Pr- we go into a semi montage as he says, a thesis. What was the decision on your part to kind of change things up? Because usually you would have the montage come after he starts his thesis to show that a passage of time has occurred. But here it happens before he starts speaking, correct? Just like when you create a world overall, you need to dis- you need to f- try to find a way to build out a moment. and uh, Sorry, like a feeling of, of what's going to be occurring here. And for me, when I, when I imagine a scene, I try to imagine... How do you sell the scene? How do you make it believable in the context of the world? And so with this, I thought funny synthy music with a weird montage and a whale with some whale sounds would allow this incredibly bizarre and non sequitur argument to sway people hell bent on beating the crap out of one or both of these people. And I, I and I thought the in it's an economic argument, and I, I'm, I've been fascinated by economics for a long time, but it's not funny. It's not fun. It's not really dramatic or interesting. 
except to me. And so I wanted to try to make it fun and interesting and dreamy and insane and dream, uh, much more of a fantasy so that it was worth listening to and so that you, I could try to sell that in this weird world, this would somehow convince people who had been whose property had been damaged and they'd been offended and insulted. That this would this would, this would solve things, and to heighten the joke so that in the end when it doesn't work, we've built it up so big that oh, it has to work. And then of course, of course, it's not going to work because it's insane. <laughs> it's just, you have to figure out how to sell the moment, sell the joke. And this was my solution was to create a whole new world unto itself. So there's a world and then we have, we enter a whole new dimension with uh, Drake who takes over the scene. 